I had changed the title of my talk to uh, there, there is no global civil society. At any rate, let me begin. Max Weber famously argued that perhaps the greatest achievement of modernity was the monopolization of violence by the state. Since then, this observation has long been taken as the sine known of modernity. Why? Because state monopolization prevents war inside the nation. There aren't any city states fighting each other as there were in the late Middle Ages and early modernity. There are no relatively independent tax collecting prebends able to fund military insurgencies as there were throughout empires in world history. Yet no matter how accurate in itself, this dictum about modernity has camouflaged, made theoretically invisible to modern sociology, two vastly significant social and theoretical facts of modern life. First, the lack of violence inside a state in no way precludes violence between states. Indeed, it often exacerbates it. Second, the state monopoly of violence has nothing at all to do with justice or democracy. In fact, it's often an impediment to it. Theorizing democracy requires an entirely different kind of theorizing than what Weber provided. The kind of Republican theorizing that first emerged in ancient Greece later developed in Europe and the Americas as a theory about civil society, a world of associations, public opinion, mass media, legality, and enfranchisement in a realm outside the state, outside the market, religion, and family, a sphere, a world that I call the civil sphere. Without the growth and power of a civil sphere, there is no hope for exercising control over the violence of a state inside the nation. And as I will suggest in a moment in my conclusion, even episodically outside the nation. These two deficits in Weberian theorizing became major problems for modern sociology for the made war between states, almost impossible to theorize, much less the social and cultural forces that might stop war between states. It was in part the ambition to overcome these deficits, I think, that made the idea of a quote, global civil society, such a vastly popular idea among UK and others, other theorists in the 1990s. I'm thinking among others of, of what I once called the Alice School of Global Civil Society, thought people like David Held, Mary Calder and Anthony Giddens. There was actually a Center for Global Civil Society at Alice which published for many years an annual handbook of global civil society. What did this utopian idea claim? First, that the nation state was being eclipsed by globalization. Second, that civil society, the theory or the key to democracy was now becoming worldwide. That in the wake of the end of the cold war, there was a worldwide belief in democratic power, a new consciousness as it were, that, and that civil solidarity was becoming globalized. That theory was a wonderful fantasy, but it wasn't a realistic sociological idea. 
it became questionable in the wake of 9-11 and has now been shattered with the recent Russian invasion of Ukraine. It is now clear that the 1990s were only an interregnum, not a new phase of world history. An interregnum between global war, between the renewal of global wars and anti-democratic, anti-civil society forms of social organization. There have been the defeat of one great worldwide bloc, an anti-democratic one, by another, a Western one. But after catching its breath, new blocks arose and are arising. New wars began and are beginning. New forms of anti-democratic social organization are flourishing. The present war against Ukraine, which endangers Europe, is a product of the state's monopolization of violence, which guaranteed that war would be a standard and debilitating feature of modernity. For there is no monopoly of violence on a global level, nothing to guarantee nonviolence within the global system considered as a whole. Does this mean that civil sphere theory is irrelevant to the issue of war? No. Because I think that civil sphere theory conceptualize how wars, how such wars can be stopped via internal mobilization and dissent against the state itself. which can manifest itself only via relatively independent communicative and regulative institutions. For example, the way that the French were able to mobilize against their late imperial wars um, in Vietnam, for example, or the way Americans were able to mobilize against their nation's wars in Vietnam and Iraq. This is obviously what is lacking inside Russia today, as it was in Nazi Germany, which is what makes this war perhaps even more ominous than the American and the French. It's also what makes the emergence of militarism in China so worrying for in China, the CCP has squashed the civil sphere. If China ever does engage in global war, there will be little inside of that country to bring it to a close. Thank you.